what's going on guys and welcome back to the channel so in today's video it's gonna be pretty quick and simple you know, it's kind of a rainy and foggy day it doesn't look too nice outside but pretty much what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna bleed the brakes on the cj7 because i did add a new rear brake line that goes from the prop valve to the back of the two brake lines and before i do any work on the challenger i got to be able to move the cj in and out of the garage so that's what we're going to do as you can see here i got the cj on these uh, harbor freight skates and it makes working on this thing so easy uh, so i just move this thing by hand and uh, i just kind of place it where i want it and i can do all the work that i want to do to it so here in the back i've got as you can see we've got oh, it's kind of dark in here but it's the oe center console got some stickers from the resto mod shop the weber carburetor box and we got boxes and bins of cj parts back here some of which which uh, i've already replaced and put on the jeep and some that are oe that uh we're just kind of hanging on to so normally when you bleed brakes you need the help of like you know a friend your wife your girlfriend and whoever gets the job of pumping the brakes is going to get a limp workout so instead of having ashley come out here and pump the brakes um and getting a leg workout i got myself a little brake bleeder uh, from harbor freight which is pretty cool i watched a ton of youtube reviews on it uh, my dad actually has one and i thought you know what I'm actually going to need to bleed the brakes on the Challenger because I got to do a brake job on that. And I want to change the fluid on the Daytona because I haven't done that. So I was like, I'm just going to go buy one. So I bought one and the first job we're going to do is the Jeep. So, all right. So what we've got here is a, a pneumatic air operated brake bleeder with auto refill kit. Now in our case, because of the way that the booster is set up on the CJ, we're not going to use the auto refill thing. We're just going to crack that thing open and then uh, use this uh, suction portion of it. But anyways, let me go ahead and set this up, move the Jeep so I can actually uh, comfortably work around it and we'll get this done. Alrighty guys, so got the Jeep set up. As you can see, there is the, I'll show you up close. This is the reservoir right here. So just gotta pry this open. You see the two diaphragms up on the lid and you see your brake fluid which is at a great level oh no it's spilling i hate that that's why i got this right here so then when it comes to the setup here now i'm just using a small uh, six gallon pancake compressor you don't need a really big compressor especially since it's just this little thing right here uh, and you just hook it up just like that and this valve will open it and there it is creating the vacuum and i've already got it hooked up you can see my wrench right there and we're going to start bleeding the furthest caliper away from the booster so it's all the way up there it's just like bleeding your brakes regularly now i am going to go from this rear passenger then to the driver rear and then i am going to go all the way up all the way around as if i were bleeding the brakes normally because we don't want any air pockets uh, to be lingering in the system. So let's get started. All right guys, so that took like 15 minutes. Uh, finished everything, fluids topped off, cleaned off the little bit of fluid that I spilled down in the fender well. So now what I was gonna do is start the Jeep and get that pedal feel. Maybe give it a quick spin around the block because I just haven't driven it in a long time and I don't like my vehicles to sit, but man, I am the king of leaving the keys in the on position on this Jeep. So right when I looked at the keys in the ignition, I was like, it's dead. I don't know why I always do that. So I got on the tender right now and then we will start it back up. I'll check out my cool keychain. Uh, not sponsored, they're just really cool. Uh, from a company called Goat Links. It's a little CJ grill and it matches the Jeep CJ. Pretty cool, I like these a lot. So anyways, well that's charging right there. I'm gonna get off the skates move Ashley's car and go for a quick rip. Alrighty guys, so I just started it, so it should start uh, right now. Uh, really, I just wanna get kind of things moving in the Jeep and then we'll, uh, you know, so things warm up and uh, seals don't start drying out and cracking. It is cold out here today. Um, so anyways, yeah, fair warning, she's pretty loud. And uh, once I get back, I'll park it over here on this side of the garage. I'm gonna clean up a few things. And then we'll talk about what's next with the Jeep. Um, some of the tuning with the Weber carb, 
Uh, I think I messed something up. Not, not a big deal, but we'll get into that in a second. So let's start this drive. Uh, warning. It's loud. stalled out <laughs> all right it smells like gas okay key is out of the ignition so that doesn't die again Whew. I really underestimated there's a spider coming off of my little yellow tree that's how much we need to start driving this thing but as you can see it, it runs and drives pretty good um, uh, it's just it was, it was too cold to ride around without a top but nonetheless that was a ton of fun it's always fun driving this thing all right, so most importantly, because I forgot, yeah, the brakes, they work good. <laughs> I was so caught up in it being so cold, but I, right when I was pulling out, I had thought it to check them on this hill of my driveway. Worst case scenario, we'll end up in the front neighbor's uh, living room. So yeah, they work great, parking brake works. Uh, so what I was talking about with the little issue that we have, and it's pretty much tuning the carburetor, when it's on the cold cycle, so when the Jeep is warming up, it runs and drives pretty good, but once it warms up, it feels like it's choking out like it's choking on itself and you can give it a ton of gas and it doesn't accelerate like at all so i'm pretty sure it has a lot to do with the carburetor and i spoke to a good friend of mine and he told me that it sounds like it's pretty much flooding out and that makes sense because when i first got the jeep the idle was too low and the battery wasn't charging off the alternator so to bump up the idle i used the throttle linkage and i didn't use the idle screw Fair warning, I don't know anything about carburetors, but I did watch a YouTube video where a guy tuned a Weber on his AMC 258, and he showed that you need a vacuum gauge, you need to um, use the two screws, one for your air fuel and then one for your idle. So I do need to go back and reset the throttle linkage because that is set too high, and then with a vacuum gauge, I can go ahead and tune the carb. So really want to get an exhaust on this thing. I don't want to be out here trying to tune the carb when it's super freaking loud like that. I think I drive this thing around the neighborhood maybe once a month just to keep things going. It barely started warming up this go around, so it needs to be driven more. Now, I do want to use the Jeep on like major, you know, camping trips and stuff like that. And I was able to source two places in Texas that sell a bunch of Jeep parts. And um, they have classic Jeep stuff, CJ5, CJ7, CJ8, Wrangler stuff, YJ, TJ. They got all sorts of stuff. So I reached out to a guy in Houston. I can't even remember the name of the shop because he got back to me at like 2.30 in the morning, uh, but I messaged him like four months ago. But I'm looking for, so let's look over here at the Jeep. I'm looking for YJ doors. These are TJ doors. 
And if I do a CJ hard top, they're not gonna line up. Um, so I'm gonna do YJ doors with the Bulldog manufacturing uppers and then the hard top. So in order for all that to line up, I do need YJ half doors, these are TJ half doors. And as you can see a little bit, they don't align the best. I mean, they look killer um, for this style, but I do need the YJ half doors. And more than likely, I'll probably end up keeping these half doors because Jeep parts, doors, half doors, everything is getting just so much harder to find. So I'm kind of becoming that guy where I hang on to everything. Um, but yeah, that's going to be what's next. Plus, I want to lay down the carpet. And as I mentioned a million times before, I want to get the correct uh, center console. Uh, it's going to be like a Tuffy, but I'll be able to run my LED wires to the front of it and control it from there. All right, guys, as you can see, I got the Challenger up in here. I got the Jeep right here. And uh, that's pretty much going to wrap up today's video. Uh, it's actually the end of the day. We ended up going to the gym and getting a nice leg day in, both me and Ashley. So now I'm totally feeling it. Uh, but yeah, pretty much now I can move the Jeep out of the garage. Next thing we're going to start doing is working on the Challenger, replacing the brakes, replacing all the fluids, and getting her ready for whatever 2022 has got for us. So that's going to wrap up today's video. If you guys like these videos, you know what to do. Hit that like button, leave a comment below, and don't forget to subscribe. Until next time, guys. Peace out.